Uh, firstly, a big thank you for showing an interest in this course and taking the time to attend this online session. This webinar is all about you and how this course can help you enhance your career and amplify your skills. Uh, before we begin, uh, I'd like to go over a few items so you know how to participate in today's event. This webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link to the recording in a follow-up email. You have all joined in listen-only mode. However, you do have the opportunity to submit questions by typing into the Q&A pane on the control panel. You may send in your questions at any time during the presentation, and then we'll collect these and address them during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. Should you experience any technical difficulties, please let us know in the Q&A box, and a member of the team will endeavor to help you. In the unlikely event that we experience any issues, we'll send out a message and we'll restart the webinar. The presentation should last around 45 minutes and then we'll tackle any questions that have been submitted. At the end of the webinar today, please take a couple of moments to complete a short survey where you can raise any further questions or feedback. So we would like you to leave here today informed, excited and with complete insight into what your compelling communication skills learning experience will be. So here are our agenda points for today. Uh, we will give you a really good introduction to the course, provide an overview of the content and structure, discuss the relevance of the course to you and your career, we'll explore the online learning experience, we'll have an opportunity to hear from our compelling communication skills alumni, and then finally, we'll answer any questions and discuss the potential of, of next steps. And so, uh, I'd like to introduce today's panel. First of all, uh, which is myself, my name is Philip Perrin and I am an, an enrollment advisor here at Cambridge Advance Online. We also have Simon Hall, our academic lead for the course Compelling Communication Skills, and Asla Deria, Head of Learning Design at Cambridge Advance Online. Today, we're also lucky to be joined by Inga and Jonathan, two past learners from the course. Uh, I'm now pleased to let you know a little bit more about our wonderful course lead, Simon. So here we are, nice picture of Simon. Uh, Simon ha has been a broadcaster for 20 years, mostly at, uh, as uh, BBC television, radio and online news correspondent. Now he runs his own business communication agency, Creative Warehouse, as well as leading compelling communication skills. He has a series of books published, including Compelling Communication, The Secret of Storytelling, Public Speaking and Presentations, Leadership Communication. He is also an article and an opinion writer for publications, including Times Higher Education, Management Today, and Business Insider. So without further ado, uh, I will now hand over to Simon. Well, thank you very much. So I'd like to start by just getting a little bit more of a sense of you as people who are interested in this course. So we're going to start with a poll. Who worries their communication skills let them down? Now you can choose your answers here on a scale of one to 10. Give us an answer. I'd like to get a sense of how you feel about your communication skills at the moment. Now, what do you think? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being very worried and one not worried at all, how worried are you? Your communication skills let you down. So, big question, Phil. What are folks saying about this? What are they going to say? What do you think they're going to say, first of all? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that there's some room for improvement. <laughs> but let's see what the results come back with. Uh, everybody just clicking through. Wow, uh, a really good mixed bag, actually. Um, so pretty even spread. But we're looking probably the majority sitting there in the middle, uh, feeling not necessarily worried, but not also terribly confident. Um, so probably a good place to start. <laughs> Oh, now that is interesting. Okay, so now let me ask you another question with another poll. This is not a trick question. Who would like to be that public speaker and presenter that everyone remembers and keeps an audience spellbound, gets a message across with complete clarity, and everyone admires? On a scale of one to ten, how would you like to be that public speaker, writer, and presenter that everyone admires? Ten being, yeah, I'd love that to be me. One, yeah, I really don't mind. I'm hoping. For a particular answer here this is not a trick question so let's see here what folk are going to say to us what do we reckon who would like to be that public speaker writer and presenter that everyone admires is this a no-brainer of a question what are what are folk thinking what are, what do you think they're going to say phil again uh i'm i'm feeling that it's going to be on the positive side 
Uh, much more so. <laughs> so there we go. So 53 uh, percent. That, that's an overwhelming majority in uh, political terms. Um, so uh, all selecting 10. So all, all loving to be that that person. Yes, indeed. Right. Well, I'm really pleased to hear that because that's what we aim to achieve on compelling communication skills. I'll tell you a bit more about the course in a while, what we do and how. And we're going to hear from a couple of learners. But firstly, I want to give you some insights from the course and here's a question for you. In the chat box, if you wouldn't mind, why, why did I start the way I did by asking who was worried about their communication skills? In the chat box, give me an answer there. What would you say is the reason? Why did I start with that question, asking you who was worried about their communication skills, rather than just the more standard way of telling you a bit more about myself or talking about the course or welcoming you to Cambridge or whatever? Give me a thought in the chat box. Why? What was I doing that was so important for com compelling communication there? Now, Phil, what do you think? What are folks saying? Yeah, pleased to see uh, we're getting some answers that I think we were hoping for, uh, mainly around uh, to engage the audience, to get us engaged, to know your audience, uh, getting some early interaction. Um, so all uh, looking like we're on the right path, I think. Great. OK, so the engagement part is critical to engage you from the very start. Now, why is that important, particularly bearing in mind with all communication? Why is that important? So I'm going to ask you another question in the chat box. Anybody know what the average kind of attention span is in this busy modern world of ours? Any guesses in the chat box? What do you think it is? There's quite a lot of disagreement about this in the research, but I've done my own study. I'm going to presentations. I've looked at the research. We have our own rule of thumb on the course. What do you think it is, Phil? What are we saying? Yeah, we've got a mixture here. Uh, so we've got some people with uh, some some good detention spans, I think. So three to five minutes, 10 minutes, um, but uh, a lot more going in there in the seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a few seconds. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely spot on. And, and the golden figure was 10 seconds. So we saw that from one of you. So that's really worth remembering. Whatever you're doing, whether it's giving a presentation, writing an email, a social media post, you don't get the audience's attention just because you think you should. You have to earn it. You have to work for it, which means starts are really important in all communication, writing, public speaking, storytelling. And starts is one of the things that we often cover in the course. We, we talk about an awful lot. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the course now. So the first module, the first week, is the foundations of effective, compelling communication. And these are interesting because they are so often the opposite of what you've learned in school, in college, you've picked up in the world of work. And then from there, once we've done the foundations, we build on them, and then we move on to writing skills, how to improve your writing skills, how to write with real impact. And here we reveal tricks of the trade, including from BBC journalists, my former profession, and great writers, some of history's greatest writers. For example, I'm going to show you something called the inverted pyramid. Now, most people, when they write a piece of content, or indeed a presentation, they do it chronologically in time order, the start, the middle, the end. But actually, there's a more effective way of communicating with real impact. And the inverted pyramid means that you put the most important information at the beginning. It's used by journalists to make sure their stories really grab the attention. And I'm going to give you an example of it now. I'm going to give you an example of the inverted pyramid in action with a message which I hope you never get. So imagine you've got this message. We need to arrange a meeting. Can everyone check their diaries? The results of the audit have arrived. We could run out of money next week. We're in serious danger of going bust. Now, I hope you never get that, but that's a very standard way of doing a message. It proceeds chronologically, start, middle, end. However, bearing in mind the busy modern world and short attention spans, if I read that and it started off by saying, we need to arrange a meeting, I certainly would be in danger of thinking, oh, I can't be bothered to read this anymore, more meetings. And I would skip and go on to the next call on my attention, meaning I've missed the important points, the stuff I really needed to know. So here's another poll for you. Look at those five points, A, B, C, D, E. If you rearranged those, what order would you rearrange them in to 
follow the inverted pyramid. So the information everybody just had to know, the most important part, was right there at the start, which then acts as a hook to bring everybody who's reading the content into it so they know exactly what they need to know. So your communication has worked far more effectively than writing in the boring, ordinary way of starting at the start and going to the end, instead writing in a way which is showing you what's the most important content at the beginning. That is the inverted pyramid. How would you reorder that? How would you reorder those points? So I'm going to be interested in what you say here. How do you reorder it? Phil, I can see you're thinking about it as well. Yeah. Would that have made a mark on you, that message? You might have found that boring, but now you're thinking, oh, I could reorder that and make it much more interesting. I certainly uh, share the the feelings around meetings <laughs> it would, would have been a big turn off from the start <laughs> yeah yes indeed so this is going to be interesting so what do you think how would you reorder those five points to make sure that communication had real impact give us a few clicks see what you think and then we're going to see the results of the poll and we'll see if your version agrees with mine so what are we thinking phil wow okay so uh quite a large majority uh all going with E as is their initial opener, uh, a couple going with with D, um, but an interesting mixture there. So um, certainly a lot of different opinions. Right. OK, so would you like to see how I would have done it? And I think you're pretty much on the right lines as well. So let's get rid of that poll and see how I would have done it using the inverted pyramid. So very different indeed. Now, look at that. Study that for a second. And you will see that is exactly the opposite order of the standard way of writing, doing it in a way which is chronological, start, middle, end. And how much more effective is it for that? So well done, many of you. I can see that a lot of you got that absolutely right. So one of the tricks we cover in writing with impact, which is module two, is how to write in a way which grabs the attention from the start and keeps your audience with you. And that's really important in the busy modern world well done really good exercise excellent so think about the order you put your information it's really important i want to tell you now about module three module three is if you force me to have a favorite module in the course the secrets of storytelling is it i love it because storytelling is so often underappreciated we kind of associate it with films and books and box sets but actually storytelling is the most powerful way to get a message across if you really want to and let me show you an example of why. We often say in the course, facts fade, but stories stick. If you've got something important you want to say, put it in the form of a story. Stories stick, facts fade. And let me give you an example of that now. Let me take you back. Let me take you back in time and ask you this question. Do you happen to know which of humanity's greatest achievements, perhaps the greatest, was brought about in large part through storytelling? Pop it in the chat box if you've got an idea, and I'll give you a clue. I'm going back to the 1960s here. Going back to the 1960s, there's an iconic human achievement which was brought about, surprisingly, in large part, by storytelling. Any guesses what it is? I'm thinking from the 1960s, and if you need a further clue, 1960s America. Any thoughts? Bill, what are people saying about this? Yeah, we've got quite a few mixtures there, but uh, we've got... Uh, ah, here we go. It's starting to pick up a little bit. Early on, we've got, we've got JFK, TV, Martin Luther King, uh, but we're starting getting Man on the Moon, Apollo 11. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's hitting a pattern now. <laughs> yeah, I see. So people are saying moon landing. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. The moon landing. It's difficult to appreciate now. But if I take you back to 1962 and President John F. Kennedy. In 1962, Kennedy made an iconic speech called, We choose to go to the moon, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. One of my favorite lines from speech making. Hard to imagine at the time, but America was way behind the Soviet Union. In the space race, the Soviets had put the first man into orbit. They put the first satellite into orbit. America was nowhere. It was well behind. And of course, the implication of that was that America was losing the Cold War, the battle between freedom and the dictating way of the East. Kennedy said about trying to change that. He thought America had to reassert supremacy in the space race. That was what that speech was all about. But he faced a big problem. 
And the problem was the American public and politicians were not convinced. They thought this would be expensive, it would be dangerous, and indeed it could fail, it could be humiliating. But Kennedy was convinced. He was convinced they had to do it. How did he set about changing the hearts and minds of America and indeed others? Through a story. He set up a story of an iconic human achievement, a great leap of science and progress. And his storytelling and its impact was so powerful, so powerful, that even after his assassination in 1963 and many difficult times for the space program, eventually in July 1969, it was a success and Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. That's the power of storytelling. If you've got a message you really want to make an impact with, use a story. Facts fade, stories stick. Now, let me give you a little insight into my life and another example of the power of storytelling by introducing that lovely looking chap there was me age 14 when I had far, far more hair. Now, I'm going to tell you a very brief story about me and the power of storytelling. When I began to put this course together for the University of Cambridge, I was asked by a couple of powerful professors why I wanted to teach. Why did I want to teach when I was quite happily writing stories and books and running a commu communication agency? And I could have told those two professors, it's because I understand the amazing power that teachers have in changing lives, changing the world. And they would probably have said, oh, very good, Simon, and tick. But would that really have made an impact on them? So instead, I told him a story, and this is a story. You might be surprised to know that when I was 14, I was a troubled child. I was getting into a lot of bother at school. I was being suspended and excluded, fighting, being disruptive, being unpleasant. And that translated out of the classroom. And I was arrested by the police several times for doing stupid things. And I was perfectly in danger of making nothing of my life and throwing it all away until one day, one extraordinary day. And I was walking down the corridor in my ordinary, comprehensive state school on the south coast of England, doing my tough guy, Simon Strutt. I really was like that then. When out of a classroom jumped two teachers, Nigel War and Jerry Lewis. They grabbed the horrible young me, pulled me into the classroom, locked the door behind us, and then drew the curtains. And at that point, I stopped being tough and cocky, and I started being scared because I thought I was going to be beaten up. This was the mid-1980s. It was a savage time, and that was perfectly possible. But actually, what those two wonderful teachers did was gave me just a five-minute talking to about how I was stupid because I had good talents and I had a decent brain. And I could be thoughtful, and I could be charming, I could be kind, I could be intelligent. I could do an awful lot with my life, or I could throw it all away, as I was on course to do at that point. And they finished by saying, get out of here, kid, get out of this classroom and prove we were right. Prove we were right to have faith in you to do this, to make this intervention in your life. And I remember coming out of that classroom utterly spellbound because no one had ever done anything like that for me in my life before, thought I was worth that intervention, worth giving that chance to. And I took it to heart and I did turn life around and I went on to do OK at school and then to university. And then I joined the BBC and I travelled to amazing places and met remarkable people and covered extraordinary stories. And then I wrote books and was published. And then I came to Cambridge and I had my own communications agency here. And I run this course for this remarkable university. And here is the punchline. I don't think any of that would ever have happened if it wasn't for the five minute intervention of Nigel and Jerry all those years ago. That's the story I told the two professors when they were checking whether I was a worthy person to lead a course at the University of Cambridge. What do you think they remembered? Me telling them, oh, teachers are important. They can have a big impact in life or the story. And I know the story made an impact because after one of the professors told me that was the moment we wanted you on board because of the power of that story, because you understood. So storytelling, facts fade, stories stick. Stories are the most beautiful, beautiful way of influencing, persuading, achieving change, getting your desires and your aims in life. So storytelling, that's module three. And excuse a little insight into myself. So after storytelling, we come to public speaking and presentations. And here is an interesting question for you. Another poll. How scared are you of public speaking? The reason I'm going to ask this poll is because I saw a report a couple of weeks ago 
that many people were more scared of public speaking than they were of death. Interesting, I thought. So I thought I would ask you. We do two modules on public speaking because we find that it's it's so important to people. It's the one they often get worried about, and there's a lot to do on it. So give me a sense of you. How scared are you of public speaking? Ten, really scared. One, not scared at all, completely relaxed and cool about it. Going to be interested to see the results of this as well. Public speaking and presenting. We do two modules on it because there's demand is there. People say, I want to know about this. It's the one thing that really holds me back. So, Phil, what have we got? Wow, another another really mixed bag again, Simon. But um, I think we're, we've we got about 20% is, is the highest figure here looking at around number eight. So working towards that scared side of things, uh, 18% around the middle again. Um, so not fully comfortable yet, uh, but certainly not petrified, but uh, certainly uh, a number fitting into all those categories. Yeah, interesting. So a lot of people are quite scared of public speaking and presenting. And again, we do two modules on this because we pride ourselves on taking people from being not very good, a bit scared, sometimes terrified, to being good and then very good, and then sometimes outstanding. And again, you might doubt that. So let me tell you a little story, a little story about one of the learners on a previous course, Inga. Now, there is a poster that Inga sent me out of the blue. She's speaking next month at this prestigious summit in New York. And she sent me a lovely note with that. She said, Dear Simon, here is a piece of news to bring a proud course leader's smile to your face. The power of language in women's leadership there in New York in July, me as a speaker. She never thought she would do that, but she says, but for the course and your, as well as Sarah and Claire, two of our brilliant tutors, encouragement and support, I would never have had the courage for this. Thank you. And, you know, that just made my heart glow, to be frank. That made my heart glow. So... Public speaking and presentations, you can do it. There are tricks you can use. We share them with you and we can take you from being scared of it to thinking, no problem, I can do this. Maybe with a bit of luck, Inga might tell us more about that in a while. So finally, a quick word about the team on compelling communication skills and how we work. We pride ourselves on being warm, friendly, fun to work with and also supportive. We are well aware communication is not easy for many people. And it can be a difficult journey. So we promise to support you, look after you and help you through. In terms of our experience, while well, I was with the BBC as a television and radio news presenter and reporter for 20 years, and now I run my own communications consultancy here in Cambridge and I'm a writer. Most of the tutors are former BBC journalists of many years experience. Many of them are award winning as well. And we also have outstanding academic expertise on board with my fellow course leader, Cambridge professor Thomas Oulet, who is an expert in storytelling, in leadership and management and other areas of communication. And one more thing we are really proud of, final thing to share with you. Feedback from our latest learners from April 2024, 100%, 100% rated the course as excellent or good. And of those, 82%, 82 were excellent. I was very proud that night, walking on air. And a couple of favourite quotes from mine. One of our lovely learners said, it didn't even feel like virtual training. That meant a lot to me because we do really hard work to try and make sure it isn't. And another one, it's been so friendly and fun and lovely. But my favourite, my absolute favourite, was a new aha moment every week. And that was from the most recent cohort of the learners. They felt they were finding something wonderful and new every week. So that's us. That's what we do. That's the how and why. And that's the course. I will now hand you back to Phil for a chat with two of our former learners. Phil. Yeah, thank you so much, Simon. Yeah, really great. Um, yeah, today we're, we're very fortunate to have with us two past learners who'll be sharing their experience on this course and answer a few questions to provide some further insight. Um, I'm pleased to firstly introduce Inga, who we've briefly met already, uh, founder of Lingua, English boutique for business le leaders. Hi, Inga, how are you doing? Hello, thank you. Thank you, Phil, for the introduction and warm hello to everyone who's present here today. Brilliant. We'll we'll get stuck in. <laughs> so uh, first question. So what was the most valuable outcome for you from taking this course? 
it's definitely my unique voice. Because, well, when does our communication become compelling? It's when we discover, when we communicate in our unique voice. And I believe that, well, whatever titles we have, whatever roles we perform in life, it's our character that has to just outshine them all. And this course for me was a brilliant opportunity to discover and then rediscover my unique voice through guided process. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really good point. And could you provide an example how you've applied the skills and knowledge from the course to a real world project or challenge? Yeah. So, Phil, immediately after the course, I attended a networking event with some renowned businessmen in our country. And I had, of course, prepared a structured and inspiring pitch now that I had all the tools for this. And then two days passed, I received two emails from two leaders asking if I could help them prepare for conferences one in Spain, the other in France. Well, I did, we did, and then they did, and very well. And here is my humble brag number two, the New York conference, which you have mentioned, thank you. And you know, it's not even about having been accepted, invited to go there. It's about having the courage to do so. And would I have done it a year ago before the course? I would not. And finally, my proud mother's brag, number three. Once I completed the course, I volunteered to give a speech at my daughter's primary school graduation ceremony in front of the whole school representing all parents. And um, it was such a beautiful moment. It was one of the most memorable moments of that event. And now that you are asking me about one major project, I believe it's creating moments that matter, moments that matter to me and to other people all through the power of words. And now I believe and well, I'm certain that I'm going to create more of such beautiful, memorable moments. Yeah, great. Really, really lovely to hear of, of, of those 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 points you made, especially it's always nice to hear when you, you can get a chance to give back to a personal side of things as, as much as the professional world as well. Um, and and Another question. So what would you say to someone who was still unsure about whether the course is for them? Yeah. So did I have doubts? Well, of course, time, money, is it really that necessary for me now? But you know, the course saved my time. Well, I didn't have to read all those books on communication to get the knowledge I do have now. Well, as for money, it paid off in a month. Now that I know how to write a proper value proposition, how to create a pitch, and then was it or is it really necessary for you? Mm, frankly speaking, I believe it's absolutely essential for anyone who cares about their communication hygiene, be it a post on social media, a networking event, a pitch, a presentation, an email, well, anything. And the course gives you just as much as you can handle in your busy lives, nothing extra, all manageable and immediately applicable. Yeah, uh, the immediately applicable is, is really yeah. what we hope to give. <laughs> so um, that's great. And, and a final question for you. What was the atmosphere of the course? Was mm -hmm. it welcoming and enjoyable? And, and how well were you looked after by the tutors and, and course leads? Yeah. Now that I can compare it with some other courses, I could say, uh, confidently say that the course team did care about us. And you know, they had at the very start of the course, they well, given the atmosphere, the, the supportive atmosphere that they had created, we also, we encouraged, we motivated each other, we supported each other, and we, we shared some inspiring examples with other learners. And this was, this still is something truly memorable and you know phil if i may just just to conclude i uh, i've never wanted to become to be just a tiny smallish drop in this huge ocean of the business world i've always wanted to become an ocean myself and i i do believe now that the power of words compelling communication and the tools that i have now 
is might be my means for becoming that ocean brilliant yeah really really nice place to finish and um thank you so much inga really appreciate uh your feedback and your time um i'm now going to introduce jonathan um jonathan is the chief commercial officer of business travel group uh hi jonathan how are you doing hi phil hi everyone a quick question here. Am I still allowed to use photographs from 10 years ago? I feel like you're a little bit cheating, but, uh, yeah. We can try and get away with it. Um, uh, but that catfishing thing is a thing now, isn't it? So, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, let's let's kick off with some questions if it's okay. So um, do you mind sharing how the course has impacted your career or, or opened up some new opportunities for you? Yeah, so like I'm you know, leading this business, uh, I've got about 800 people um, and we're going down like a very kind of different route at this, at this moment. And I need to communicate the business strategy to them. And one course that, you know, one part of the module that we, we discussed earlier on today actually was the JFK speech. So I could bring in a, you know, this happens in Q1, this happens in Q2. You're going to lose the audience very, very quickly. And you need to kind of connect with people. And that's where through the storytelling, uh, I've created this strategy, which uh, I've just spoke to 800 people yesterday, um, and it went down really successfully. So yeah, fundamentally, it's it's helped me in my internal communication to the rest of the team. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, no, that's great to hear. Um, how has this course influenced or changed your approach to communication? Yeah, so again, in travel, one of the things that we hate Right, who hands up who hasn't been in this situation where the flight's been cancelled? You need to connect with someone and you're standing there at the back of the queue. You're stressed, you're sweaty, you're anxious, you need to get home. And that's the story, right? And so previously, what I was doing was saying, well, we'll answer your phone in you know under 20 seconds, 90% of the time. Uh, facts fade, stories stick, as, as Simon said earlier on. So really moving away from that statistics approach in sales and an overall kind of market positioning, product positioning, uh, I think across the company, uh, I'm bringing in this change. Uh, so it's had a, a huge impact uh, in, in, in the way that we're communicating with our clients. Brilliant. Yeah, really good point. Um, and could you provide an example of how you've applied the skills and knowledge from the course to uh, a real world project or challenge? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, who here has ever experienced uh, maybe a university? I'm sorry for the Cambridge University people on the call. Who's experienced nodding off in a dimly lit uh, lecture hall with a professor who is reading lots and lots of words from a slide, right? I also fell into that, okay? So I had 300 page, 300 slide decks with loads of words on the slide. And what we did in the course was we reviewed that and we said, well, can your brain understand the words which are being spoken and reading at the same time? And they can't. It's called the cognitive overload. And so, you know, part of the course is about beautiful slides, splendid slides. And it's the, one of the concepts is can it fit on your T-shirt if you're standing a little bit further away? So I have completely changed all of the slides that we've created. Um, and even different techniques about maybe sending material out before or after and how to make slides more impactful rather than just being the same thing that you're speaking and the same thing you're presenting. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And and finally, uh, in terms of saying to someone, again, uh, who was still unsure about whether the course is right for them, what, what would you say? So uh, my background is I was a lawyer. Okay. Uh, you know, have a big business. I do speeches and, and up on stage. And before this course, it was in Lisbon and it was in front of a lot of finance people. And I completely froze. Actually, just before this call, I was standing doing a standing position that has been taught during the call, uh, during the course. I was practicing my you know, voice ranges, uh, all the different techniques that was done. And before this course, I would have found doing this speech to how many people are here? 65. I would have found that difficult. Right now, it has fundamentally changed. So I feel a lot more confident. And that's from someone who should have been confident with the lawyer background and the company background. So I would say to even the people who feel like maybe they're in the, or the ratings that they're quite confident that this can elevate your confidence. And for people like me who have stress, it can definitely help. So 
Um, look, I'm actually reaching out to the team to do even further training. Uh, I think it's been such great value uh, for my time. And, uh, and of course, for the money as well, it's, it's, it's greatly impacted my, my career. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Jonathan. I, I think a really good point there about elevating. I, I think uh, the course really holds a lot of value for, for all levels of experience and, and anybody who's looking to improve, but um, some really good examples of how that's happened. So um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we're now going to move uh, across to to Asla. Um, uh, she's going to talk about the learning design and experience and, and give you a little bit more insight. Thank you, Phil. And um, I, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the learning experience in our courses, but I think our past learners already um, given a very good flavor of what it is like to be within the course. So thank you for that. Um, our courses basically are built with you, the busy professionals in mind. Uh, we understand you all have very busy lives and you uh, approach your development pragmatically. Uh, we use the latest research on learning design to create rigorous, high quality learning experiences, which gives you actionable, transferable skills that you can take to your both personal and professional lives. Um, so how do we do that? First, um, we use an active um, uh, learning approach and we focus on application of learning. Um, what that means is that you won't have to be left with reading 300 slides or pages and pages of information or even watch uh, very long video uh, lecture slide, uh, video lectures. Um, but uh, it's a very active experience. So it's not about just clicking next, but um, it's about not down, only downloading knowledge into your brain, but it is about uh, embedding short activities that allow you to check your understanding and apply the skills and get feedback in where you can improve. Uh, we also make use of social learning a lot. Uh, we know from research that learners uh, learn as much uh, as from their peers as from the experts. So we leverage that through interactions using store, uh, discussion boards. Um, and uh, in the uh, online learning environment, this is closely monitored by our brilliant tutors as well. Um, also, I should say our tutors not only uh, monitor the discussion boards, but also um, they monitor the other interactions within the course. And also we have an a inbox system, inbuilt inbox system on the learning management system that uh, you can get in touch with them on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, the majority of the course is asynchronous, so you, you know, it's self-paced, you can work it in your own time, uh, but there is an allocated time frame. Um, so you need to bear that in mind that it is a cohort-based course, so the new material will be available each week uh, for the learners to go through in cohesion so then we can allow that peer learning, peer supported network to take place. And finally, you get weekly live sessions with your peers, your tutor, Simon as well. Um, and this is your chance to get clarification on the learning for that week, um, take a deeper dive into a particular topic or talk to other professionals like yourself. Um, these live sessions are recorded, so if you are not able to make it to all of them, do not fear. They are posted in the uh, virtual learning environment, so you can either watch back or if you haven't been able to attend, you can uh, watch it, the recording. Um, there is also live session discussions forum uh, in the um, virtual learning environment. You can post questions before the um, session. You can also share some reflections after you watch it or attend it. Um, and uh, I'm going to now talk about the uh, learning platform. So um, we do have a learning virtual learning environment called Canvas. Um, it does have a very uh, easy to navigate and engage uh, interface. Um, you can see on the screen there are some um, um, one of our courses is not necessarily co compelling communication skills, but one of our courses showing um, and it's basically a very simple um, easily chunked, uh, digestible uh, way of approaching course design um, with beautiful graphics, short videos, and a lot of uh, interactives within it. Uh, so you will have the chance to go through them, as I said, in your own um, in your own pace. Um, but this is mostly focusing on not a lot of text, but how you can um, digest information without cognitive overload, uh, as Jonathan mentioned earlier on. Uh, and how you can uh, get go at your own pace. Um, and as you heard from the pre previous learners as well, it really is focused on giving you the skills that you can take back to your professional context. 
Um, Canvas also allows uh, you to populate your learner profile with images, bios, and your socials, so you can uh, create further connection with the other participants. So that's a whistle stop tour. I appreciate the video was a little too fast, perhaps, but you can watch back on the recording. Um, and with that, I think Bill is back to you. Brilliant. Yeah, thank you so much, Asla. And um, I hope that's been helpful just to get a little bit of insight into uh, the learning design. Um, and yeah, back over to me just to, to give you a little bit of um, information about why we're different. Um, plenty of online providers out there, but but what makes us stand out? Well, first of all, all, all of our courses are, are developed and, and led by Cambridge Academics. They're quality assessed by our online education committee consisting of senior Cambridge professors. Um, we offer weekly webinars with our course academics. Uh, these are interactive sessions and allow for direct contact with our course leads and tutors and your peers. We provide specialist tutor support with a low ratio of learners to tutors. There'll be a maximum of, of 30 people to any one tutor, which really gives the time for individual feedback and support throughout the course. We have a world-class learning management system that provides the best learning experience. Uh, and upon successful completion, you will gain a University of Cambridge online certificate, uh, which we'll get to see an example of in just a moment. Um, our learners tend to be from more than 60 countries globally, which again opens up the opportunity for networking across the world. And finally, as Simon touched upon specifically for this course, uh, we receive highly positive learner feedback. 98% of our learners across 20 courses in the January 2024 cohort rated their courses good or, or excellent. So really consistent across the board feedback for, for, for really positive reviews. Uh, as mentioned earlier, upon completion, uh, learners will earn a certificate of achievement directly from the University of Cambridge Online and signed directly from the Pro Vice Chancellor. Um, you can see this on the screen now, and uh, obviously we will send that out once you successfully complete the course, so you can post this on your social profile or list it on your CV or your resume. So now that you've got all this information, uh, what are the next steps? Well, I'd love to connect with anybody who does have any further questions or, or wants to dive deeper into the contents of what was covered today. Um, there is a link to book an appointment via the website, uh, via Calendly, if you'd like to have a chat. Uh, or also you can drop us an email. Uh, my email is popped on the screen there, uh, or you can also uh, contact us via the website, via the contact form. Uh, of course, of course, enrollment can be done right online. Uh, you can pay by card or request a quotation. Uh, our next course is due to start on the 15th of July. The enrollment deadline is always one week before. So 8th of July is the date to be aware of. Uh, and we do repeat the course quarterly and we'll have a future date this year uh, on the 7th of October as well. So uh, now, if you haven't already, uh, please use the Q&A section um, to send in your questions about the course. And we've got an opportunity now to answer them live. Uh, let me just pull up. There was a really good uh, question or, or perhaps statement that, that, that came up early on in the webinar when we were talking about the inverted pyramid. So perhaps we can start there and, and Simon, if you can help me with this one. Uh, so we were talking about kind of leading with those uh, engaging messages, but how do you avoid um, stressing people out by regularly sending those messages out and, and kind of that burnout scenario? A good question. Well, uh, always remember that uh, probably the most stressful thing I find in life is being deluged with information, pages and pages and pages of it, really long emails, briefings or reports. I have found that uh, people we've worked with on the course, if they keep their briefings or their emails short, sharp and succinct, they can become remarkably popular at work. And uh, one of the things we mentioned on the course is a historical aspect on this. It goes back to the Second World War and Winston Churchill, who complained that uh, everybody was giving him far too much information in his briefings. And he asked that they be limited to one or two pages in a memo, which has become quite famous and is now in the archives office. And he gives advice on how to do that as well. And we've had that for many, many years. There's a quotation that goes back even before that, which is often attributed to Mark Twain, although it's disputed. And it says, I'm sorry, I wrote you a long letter. I didn't have time to write you a short one. So this is all about the importance of brevity. And we find that when people can express themselves, say exactly what they need to do, short, sharp and simple, they don't stress anyone out. They become very popular indeed. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really good points. 
Um, a, a good question here around the the assessment on the course and and what that consists of. Um, perhaps you could just touch on on what we ask candidates to actually do uh, in terms of the assessment side of things. Yeah, so we have a rolling assessment. So every module, there are quizzes and interactions to check your understanding. So you will be filling those in as you go. But the mainstay of the assessment is through two assignments. There's an assignment after the halfway point of the course and then towards the end of the course. And uh, we don't give away exactly what we ask you to do in those, but uh, we do ask you just to apply all of the skills uh, that you have learned up until that point. They take up the mainstay of the marks and they are always based on scenarios which would be useful for you in your professional life. So it's important to emphasize these are not academic exercises where we set you an exam, for example. We would ask you to tell us a story, tell us a story about something important, a point you felt needed to be got across. And we would look at how you do it using insights from the course. And as you've seen here, it might be how to start it. It might be the structure of it. It might be how to end it. It might be the use of brevity, character. So it's mainly the two assignments, but we also try to make sure those assignments are enjoyable for you as well as challenging, but also productive. Yeah. Yeah. Really good point. Um, a couple of questions here. Uh, one that perhaps could be answered followed by the other. Um, and it's about live sessions. So what are the live sessions like? I think, Simon, you'll be best to give a little bit of a taste and a flavour of what that and how much interaction is there with the tutors and fellow learners? The live sessions, if you imagine the uh, 15 minutes I spent with you where we did some points and then I gave you some exercises and we did some polls and some chat box and discussions, imagine them being like that, but with the added element that we actually have people onto our, we call it our glittering internet stage. So you get to unmute yourself, you get to talk to us and the group. So they are like that. They uh, they cover some of what we've done in the course because we often get questions about certain points. So we like to clarify those, but they also build on what we've done in that week as well. So they try to add value. They're always warm. They're always engaging. They're always highly interactive. They're always very friendly. So hopefully we give you a good sense of learning more material, but also give you momentum as well, give you real energy running through the course in those. Yeah, yeah, really helpful. And and, and the other question here that, that that happy to kind of elaborate on is is around the schedule of the live sessions and, and when they're available. So in, in terms of our live sessions, uh, we, we schedule them uh, for each of the course runs and, and they're confirmed six to eight weeks prior to the course starting. In terms of the next current session, live sessions, there, there is a choice. So there'll be two, session, two sessions per week. Uh, they're on a Thursday afternoon, one at two o'clock and one at four o'clock in the afternoon UK time. Um, so when you log into your platform, as you sign up for the course, there'll be a calendar and you'll be able to sign up to the session and, and log in each week uh, for the one that suits best. Um, a, a question here, and, and it could be a good one to, to clarify and, and perhaps we'll elaborate on the other question uh, related to uh, what kinds of background previous learners for the course have come from. Uh, if we start with that one, the second one is a little bit more about English requirements. So unless you'd like to pop those together, uh, your experience from previous candidates would probably be useful. Yeah, I suppose they do go together. We're really proud that who comes on the course? The answer is everyone. And that was a, a great surprise, but a great delight as well. So in terms of age range, we have, I think the, the youngest has been around 20 years old and then the eldest have been in their 80s. So the wonderful range of ages, wonderful range of countries. We've managed to hit all the continents apart from Antarctica, but I'm I'm expecting uh, an application from a penguin at some point, although that may not happen. So we have geography, we have age ranges. And in terms of professions, again, it's been remarkable. The, the range of professions, everything from academia to marketing to the finance industry, we've had medics, we've had lawyers, we've had so, so many people all of them united by being concerned about their communication skills. And in terms of positions in companies as well, we've had everything from fairly junior staff to very senior staff. So really we've, we've got the, the whole range of people. It's just that concern they have that they're being held back. They're not fulfilling their potential because they're not able to communicate what they want to say or do adequately enough. And in terms therefore of English, we make, we're very careful that the course is not designed to be academic. So one of the principles is simplicity. You will not find lots of long words. You will not find very difficult 
paragraphs full of lots of clauses. The English is simple and straightforward. It's designed to be accessible and inclusive rather than exclusive. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And and to elaborate that, and in, in in terms of our courses, whilst you you associate with with the University of Cambridge, we, we don't have a formal application process. Uh, we don't ask you to present any formal paperwork to join the course. It is open to everyone, and and it's obviously around suitability, and and we look mainly around what your goals and motivations are to to kind of recommend the course to you. Um, and so that C2 level that we, we mentioned in terms of recommendation uh, certainly is not prohibitive and, and we don't expect everybody to have it. Uh, it is there as guidance only. Uh, scrolling through, lots of questions coming through. Um, let's have a look at this one. So uh, an interesting one. Do you consider the intercultural element in communication in this course? Not only our individual background, but also having international audiences for our messages. Yes, we do. Yes, because the foundations of good communication are the same, pretty much whichever culture you come from. And they're often surprising to people. So that is something we do consider. And we do have people, um, perhaps like Jonathan, from you, from whom you heard earlier on, who have to communicate across different nations, different continents, different people. So we make sure that that is something that we think about as well. We try to make everything we do applicable to any form of situation, to any type of area, any people, so that you can use the skill set you have wherever you go and whatever you're doing. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, really helpful. A couple of questions here around managing the course that that, that happy to to answer. One one specifically asked around a timetable, and and the other one how to manage this around a full time job. And um, and I think uh, Asla touched on this in terms of we've designed a course that is flexible, although with structure. Um, we don't mandatorily require you to be online at any specific time during the course. So you can do this completely in your own time and access all the resources. Those live sessions will be recorded so you can always catch up and your tutor is readily available to kind of help and support you throughout the course. So certainly in terms of the time commitment, we say six to eight hours each week as, as, as a reasonable uh, commitment time to, to complete everything that you need to. Uh, so you could work that quite easily around a full-time job in terms of setting time aside, whether that's mornings, evenings, weekends, and, and, and do that in your own time. Of course, in terms of the live sessions, we would recommend you joining those. They're a great, great added value. And, and for the, this course in particular, really helps to bring the, the learning to life. Uh, and as uh, mentioned there that the, the timetable, there is no fixed timetable as such, with the exception of those live sessions that happen each week which you can attend uh, if you are able to do so. Uh, let's have a little look, see what else we have got. Uh, yeah, an interesting question here, and, and perhaps it's going to be tricky to do just over a, a webinar, but um, somebody asking for proof that we are related to the University of Cambridge, and, and a question that I get quite a lot uh, uh, on a daily basis because of how the university is set up and, and is quite segmented and uh, various different colleges and faculties and uh, and, and things that go on. Um, uh, if, if you look up Simon, uh, you will find him. <laughs> he's, he's probably our, our biggest uh, proof and credential that we have um but a little bit of information about who we are in terms of how we sit within the the university so cambridge advance online we we are best described as a, a department of the university of cambridge we sit within cambridge university press and assessment uh, and our mission uh, that has been given to us probably just a little over three years ago now is to develop an online mechanism for the future of the university's learning to be able to offer them uh, an opportunity to, to move uh, particular courses and, and, and future of, of degree programs and things to, to an online platform. Cambridge Advance Online, it's our flagship. It's, it's the beginning of that project, creating short courses for postgraduates and professionals uh, and tapping into the wonderful expertise such as Simon to be able to kind of create greater accessibility to you, uh, our learners that, that can then uh, attend these short courses um, and, and really benefit from that. So I hope that helps a little bit. Uh, uh, apart from that, uh, do reach out by email and happy to provide any other proof or, or relevant uh, uh, information that, that, that will help to, to answer that. Um, let's have a little look. Uh, sorry, just bouncing between uh, the chat and the cute question and answer pane. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Any good tips for practicing public speaking? Simon. Where do I begin? <laughs> uh, yeah, 
Um, although it feels embarrassing and uh, it does sometimes feel awkward, you should record yourself. We've all got these phones or tablets now, uh, so no one has to see it. Prop it up in the corner of your room somewhere where you're in private and just try and give me a little presentation to it. See how you look, see how you sound. It's remarkable how we we imagine ourselves being very different from the way we sometimes came across. I mean, I remember when I first went on to BBC News, I, I thought I was handsome, charming, witty, with a gravelly, deep voice. And the first time I saw myself on camera, I have to say that was rather deflating because I had none of that. But I worked at it and I got a bit better at it. So recording yourself is really important. Things to remember, pacing, nerves will always hit you when you're presenting. Nerves are natural. The trick is embracing them. They help you to perform at your peak. They get the energy going. Embrace them and use them. But they make you go fast, so slow down. Notice all the great public speakers. They take their time. It's not just the words. It's the gaps between the words. The gaps for the meaning to sink in. The gaps for the authority to come across. So just think about what you're doing. Practice it. Look back on it. If you can bear it, I know it can be excruciating, but generally that's the best way to do it. And you'll actually see how you're coming across and you'll learn from that. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Good answer. Thank you, Simon. And, and of course, uh, you can always join our course. So <laughs> it's a good place perhaps to finish. And um, uh, we're starting to run out of time. So I, a really big thank you for, to everybody for, for joining today's session. Uh, apologies if we haven't managed to tackle your question today. Uh, we will endeavour to get back to you on any questions or topics that we haven't been able to address. Uh, as a reminder, there'll be a short survey when you exit the webinar, uh, which will give you that opportunity to ask another question if you haven't already uh, please do take a couple of moments to provide us with some feedback uh, and look out for a follow-up email later this week in which we'll share the recording uh, and some of the useful links that have been mentioned today. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, everybody who's come along. Uh, have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Bye.